I bought a whole load of gadgets for the bathroom. Let's try them out, see if they're any good, and you can let me know which is your favourite. So the first one is this toy light. It's a play on words, because it's actually a light for your toilet. It's got these rather humorous selling points, but let's open it up and take a look. It comes wrapped in some bubble wrap, some instructions, and here's the unit. On the reverse side here, we've got this LED on the end of this flexible arm, and on the front we've got a darkness sensor and a motion sensor, and we can set it to either automatically cycle through eight different colours or stay on a single colour. This part here is flexible and I'm lifting it up to remove the battery cover and it takes three AAA batteries to power it. So let's test it out. To use it, first of all we're going to shape this bit roughly to the profile of the rim of your toilet, then lift up the seat and clip it over like this. And if you need to, it's easy enough to adjust. You can slide it around the rim to change the position, and because it's a motion sensor, it needs to be facing somewhere where it'll pick up motion when you walk into the room. And now it's positioned, let's try it out. It only works when the room's dark, and with a bit of motion, there we go, it switched itself on. <laughs> wow, check that out, it's actually really cool. It definitely lights it up enough for you to see where you're going, and for you to use the toilet. And I love the way it automatically cycles through the different colours, so if you find your regular light just too bright in the middle of the night, I definitely say this is a really good alternative. Next I want to show you this. It's a UV toothbrush sanitizer. I pulled it out of the box and here we go. Oh dear, it looks like I managed to turn it on somehow as well. I must have pressed a button. Let's take it out of this bag. Yeah, there we go. So here's the unit and it looks like they give us a spare one of these sticky pads. So the idea is, inside here is an ultraviolet bulb which will apparently sterilise 99.9% .9 of the bacteria on your toothbrush to help guarantee it really is clean. If we try and turn it on when it's open, it doesn't work, it must be a safety feature. But when we close the lid again, check that out, you can see a glowing blue inside. And the timer starts to count down from 300 seconds. Inside this little box we've got just a charging lead, and on the back there's this removable mounting plate which will stick to the wall. The instructions seem pretty straightforward. Forward. So let's start by charging it up. First I removed the scratch protection film on the screen, then I plugged in the charging cable. It's got an inbuilt 2000 milliamp lithium battery, which should enable you to use the device 70 times on a single charge. Next we need to peel off the backing paper on the adhesive mount and fix it to the wall. I'm sticking on the bathroom tiles, but do make sure they're clean first. And once it's charged, you can clip on the unit. Inside I found this little toothbrush holder is removable in case you need to wash it and it just clips back in. So the idea is we line our toothbrushes up facing the UV bulb, then press the button and it'll expose them to the UV light for 300 seconds which will kill the bacteria. If you open the door, yep, it turns itself off, then restarts when you close it. It can hold five toothbrushes and even electric toothbrushes. And once the time is finished, your toothbrushes should be bacteria free. There's links in the description if you want to buy any of these gadgets. But next I want to show you what's inside here. They call it a toothpaste squeezer and holder. Open up the box and take it out of the bag and we've actually got two of them. They're this plastic kind of roller device. They seem pretty solid. There's a rubber anti-slip pad on the base. You can slide this part out and there's a spring-loaded mechanism inside to keep on a little pressure. So the idea is we take our tube of toothpaste, slide the end into this slit along the side of the roller like this, then push it back into the holder. Now we can turn the roller like this to wind it all up onto the barrel. It's actually pushing it down really flat and squeezing any toothpaste from the bottom right up to the top. And there we go, it's now primed and ready. So if I twist it just a little bit more, out comes the toothpaste. That's really nice and simple. Let's slide it back off quickly and see just how flat it's made it. Oh wow, check that out. I think that's definitely flatter than I'd ever squeeze it with my hands. That's impressive. It's certainly a handy way to keep your toothpaste neat and to help you squeeze it all out. And of course, you can also use it with other tubes too. Here I'm going to try it with some hand cream. Well, they definitely work well, and I actually think they look quite neat. But what do you reckon? Would you find them useful? Next I want to show you what's inside here. It's a pack of two LED water facets for the end of a tap. So apparently as water flows through, it'll light it up with colour. That sounds cool, let's try it out. When I tried fitting it to this bathroom tap though, unfortunately there was no removable facet on this one, so it couldn't be fitted. So if you want to try these, it's worth making sure the tap that you want to use it on is suitable before you buy them. Instead, I'm going to test it out on this mixer tap. So the idea is we unscrew the standard facet like this, it should just turn off, and we're going to screw on the new LED one instead. It comes with an adapter, which you might need to use, and don't forget to fit the rubber seal. When it's fitted, it looks pretty neat to be fair. So let's see what happens when I turn the tap on. Oh wow, look at that, straight away it lights up. 
turn the tap off and it stops instantly. What's amazing is there's no batteries in this. It's powered by the water flowing through it. Pretty cool, huh? And what's more is if the water is below 32 degrees C, it lights up green. If you start running some warm water above this temperature, it turns blue. And if it gets above 42 degrees Celsius, it turns red to let you know it's hot. And if it keeps getting hotter, the red colour will start flashing if it gets above 46 degrees. Like a warning light. Oh wow, I actually really like it. And of course, it's a lot more effective if the room's a bit darker. Next, we're going to take a look at this. It's a flexible cleaning brush for plug holes in your bath or sink. It's made on this piece of wire, which is flexible, so you can bend it into shape. It's got a basic plasticky handle, and I think they're nylon bristles. The brush part actually measures 35 centimetres long, and I'm going to try it out with this basin here. Now, I do know this drain is a little bit dirty inside, so let's see what we find. I'm putting it straight down the hole in the middle, then, oh, oh look at that. you got to go slowly because it starts flicking out the mess. I'm pulling it all the way out and, oh, check that out. Black sludge and hair. Well, that can't be very good for the drain. Let's try a bit more and see what we find. Oh yeah, all that's on the sidewalls of the drain. I went all the way around and pulled out as much as I could. And what's great is, because it's flexible, you can even bend it to shape and do the overflow hole a bit. Then, once I cleared as much as I could, I gave it all a wipe up and washed it all out with some nice soapy water. But I'm also going to use the brush again whilst running water down the drain. This should help to expel any pieces which are dislodged and sitting in the U-bend. After about 30 seconds, the brush was coming back out nice and clean again, and I think that's made a really big difference. No more smelly drain. Now here's a great little product. It's a pack of two silicon drain protectors. You can get them in different colours and they're super flexible and they come with little sucker pads on the base. These measure about 14 centimetres square and the idea is they should help to protect our drains like this one in the shower tray which can sometimes clog up with hair. Just place one of these over the top then when you are showering it should collect the hair instead of allowing it to block up your drain. Then it's super easy just to pick up and dispose of. Before we look at the other products I want to show you a really cool life hack you can do to clean your drains. Take a flat piece of plastic, the lid from this ice cream tub is ideal, and draw out a shape something along these lines. It doesn't need to be precise. Cut it out with a pair of scissors. The important thing really is that there's a decent hook at the bottom and that the whole thing's flexible. Now if you find your shower isn't draining properly, remove the grid. If yours is a bit stuck, you may need to use something a little bit stronger to lift it with. Then lift out the dip tube. Ugh, that needs a good clean. Now we can use our new tool to go fishing. Oh, it's full of hair. But the tool works really well, and it's a great way to reuse some of the plastic we would be otherwise throwing away. Next I want to show you what's inside here. Tip them out onto the table, and there's four of these weird looking things. They're actually multi-function silicon holders, a bit like hooks. They're flexible and springy, they're also waterproof, and come with an adhesive pad on the back. They come in different colours, and the idea is you stick them to the wall. Somewhere like these bathroom tiles is ideal, and you can use them for all sorts of things. They make great toothbrush holders. You can use one for a razor or even a flannel. But have you ever seen these? Inside here are actually eight toothbrushes made out of bamboo. Each box contains two and they've got this lovely natural sustainable bamboo handle. This will just degrade to help the environment and reduce on plastic. The bristles are made out of nylon and they come in a whole range of different colours to help distinguish whose toothbrush is whose. The packaging is all plastic free to keep it environmentally friendly and recyclable. And they do appear quite basic but I found they give a really good clean. Is this a familiar sight in your house? A messy gunked up tube of toothpaste? Well, apparently what's in here should help. They call it a self-closing cap. No mess and no stress. Apparently it'll give an even application of your toothpaste every time. They're reusable and it should help to keep your toothpaste tube nice and mess free. It's a silicon cap with a small slit in the top. And to use it, we just push it on the top of our tube. If I give it a little squeeze, you should be able to see it filling up a little. So let's try it out on a brush. Oh nice. Yeah, well that worked. It's certainly nice and even. And, well, yeah, the top is perfectly clean. Let's try it out a few more times. Well, it does actually work really well. I was a bit dubious, to be honest, but it has actually got really good reviews on Amazon, and I can absolutely see why people like it. What do you reckon? Would you use one? And once the tube is empty, you can just pull it off, wash it out, and use it again. Next, I'm going to try out this automatic toothpaste dispenser. Take it out of the packaging, and here it is. Well, it looks smart. It's got kind of a marble effect look to it. There's this silicon plug in the top, which is where we'll fit the toothpaste. And there's this nozzle up here inside. It doesn't need any batteries. It works with a pump by pushing this part inside back with your toothbrush. To use it, first we need to install it onto a wall. There's an adhesive strip on the back, so peel off the backing. And fix it nice and square onto the wall. 
Then take a tube of toothpaste and undo the lid, push it down into the silicon plug and screw it on. It should make a nice airtight seal and I actually think it looks quite smart. So let's try it out. I'm using my electric toothbrush and I'm pushing it up against the plunger. It takes a couple of pumps to begin with to prime the toothpaste through the mechanism. And there we go, it kind of missed the brush and went onto the stem. Maybe the brush on this electric one is just too small. So I'll try it with a normal one. One pump and yeah, it deposits a nice blob of toothpaste. Pretty cool, huh? I then found if you don't push it so far in, it deposits the toothpaste more centrally on the brush. So I'm going to try it with the electric one again. And this time I found I could get it spot on. Yeah, look at that, that's really good. Next I'm going to take a look at this Sonic Scrubber. It says it's a powerful cleaning tool for kitchens and bathrooms. It claims to cut scrubbing time by 57%, eliminates cleaning fatigue and it reaches hard to clean areas. It comes with a variety of different brushes for different applications. So let's open it up and take a look. <laughs> I think this thing is basically cross between a washing up brush and an electric toothbrush. It does feel good quality, it's got this grippy rubber handle and it oscillates the brush on the head. Mine came ready fitted with batteries and you access them here in the end of the handle. There's four AA batteries in total. It clips together nicely and there's a waterproof seal. There's an on off switch here and it operates pretty much like an electric toothbrush for an elephant. To change over the brush you just twist it and remove it, then swap it out. What is quite cool is the on and off switch can also be used as a press button, so you can do short pulses by just pressing down with your thumb. This one's been quite cleverly cut as a cone shape to allow you to get into corners and things, and these two brushes are quite similar, but one's got firm bristles and the other one's a lot softer. It's really good for cleaning things like your shower rail and cleaning up your tiles and grout lines, but I'm also going to try it out on some kitchen cleaning. Let's try it on this hob, cleaning the mess around the burners. I squirted on a little soap, then started cleaning with a wet brush. Well, it's foaming up quite nicely, and it does oscillate back and forth really quickly, and it's made a big difference. But it hasn't cleaned it all off. If I'd let it soak with some oven cleaner, it may have cleaned it all off straight away. But I'm going to go over it again quickly, then leave the foam to soak for a few minutes. And I'm also going to do the same around this small one too. Then after five minutes of soaking, I went over them both again, then wiped them off, and well, yeah, it really hasn't taken me any effort at all. They're not perfectly clean, but they are a lot lot better. A really big improvement. Next I'm going to try it out on this grubby double glazed window unit, and when I go back and forward over it just with a brush, it really seems to be getting in there. I mean, maybe I could just do the same with a toothbrush, but it's probably a lot more work and not as fun. It's really good for getting in the nooks and crannies on your white goods, like this dishwasher. And it gets right up under here in the hand grip too. And you could even use it for things like cleaning up your trainers. But I'm going to try it out on these kitchen taps which have got a big build up of lime scale and grime. I'm swapping the large head for this smaller cone shaped one. Added a little bit of soap and with a little bit of water worked my way around the base of the tap. I'm also going along the crossbar here and around the base of the other one. Now it's probably quite a hard ask for it to really remove all the lime scale but let's see how it's done. It's certainly a lot better than it was before, and with a bit of lemon juice or vinegar it should clean the rest of that off easily. The one thing I did notice though was using the brush across the horizontal piece here, I think I've put all these very small scratches into the tap. You can see all the swirl marks going back and forward across the bar. And what is curious though is if I read the instructions, it does say not recommended for tinted windows, vehicle paint and stainless steel. Which is a bit curious, because on the packaging it also says perfect for taps and hobs and it shows stainless steel examples on the back. To finish off here though, I'm going to try using it to clean the grime off around the plug hole. What's really nice about this brush though is you don't have to scrub away at anything. It just sits there oscillating and it does the work for you. And after a minute or so, with a wash down, well look at that, it's made a really big difference. I'm definitely impressed. Now next I want to show you this. It's designed to help remove lime scale from the nozzle of your tap, for your kitchen or bathroom. And what you do is pour a descaling agent into the bulb like this. I'm just using vinegar. Then hook it over your tap and pull the bulb over the nozzle like this. Leave it on to soak for an hour or so, then carefully remove it. Run the tap and give it a clean off and it should help keep the lime scale at bay. Perfect for bathroom or kitchen. One of the funniest cleaning gadgets I've tested is this automatic washing up brush. And if you'd like to check out the video you can click on the link here. Have fun, stay safe and as always thanks for watching.